Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of BIM Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Cotelier. I am an architect, a BIM specialist and the founder of uh, BIM Pure. If you're watching a uh, live today, so what, what date is it? On, on March 12th, 2025, you can type in the chat where you are uh, watching from. We've got Alex from New Zealand. We've got someone from Louisville, Kentucky. We've got Rena. We've got Ryan from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. We've got Ashley from Cincinnati. Asham from Kamloops, BC. Uh, all right. Thanks for tuning in and watching live. We've got a great guest, a great show for you today. Before we've gone, a couple of things to uh, mention. First, let's go with uh, next week's episode. That's going to be with Roly Stevens from Ryan Company. He's the design technology specialist over there, and he's been using Unify, now known as Content Catalog. It was acquired by Autodesk a couple of years ago. Now it's included with the Autodesk Doc subscription. And Roly has been using it. He's got a lot of tips on how to uh, actually implement content catalog in your firm to organize all your event families, uh, detailed sheets, and so on. So that's uh, next week on the next episode of BIM Pure Live, same time. So which date is that? That's on March 19, 3 p.m. Eastern. And uh, what else do we got? Give me a sec. Okay, there we go. And uh, on BIM Pure, we currently have our spring sale going on at 20% off on all our content. And we've got a lot of new content that has been added recently and coming up very soon. First, we've recently released a new mini course with Enric Kurt Laron called Practical Open BIM. So that's uh, been added to uh, the BIM Pure website on the membership. Then we have what is called the Dynamo Space Camp, a series of three live events to help you learn and master Dynamo. That's coming soon. We've got a new mini course as well coming in April with Siepan Mikulic, former guest of BIM Pure Live about uh, the owner and founder of AI in AC, and the name of this mini course is ChatGPT for BIM Managers. That's coming up soon. And then we've got a course later in, in the spring, late spring, called Mastering ACC for Revit Projects. So that's all upcoming content, but if you join the membership, you also get access to our entire collection of Revit courses, downloadable content such as the Pro Template, the Windows and the Doors collection, Dynamo scripts get access to the community and can see all the courses that we have so far with various BIM and AC Tech Mega Masters. Uh, very proud to have been able to collaborate with these uh, experts. And we also have live master classes. I would say roughly once a month, uh, me or other experts come in for a live session exclusive to the members. So a bit similar to BIM Pure Live, except these are really uh, mostly technical topics to help you solve uh, Revit or other apps problems and we had fresh new content on the membership about every couple of weeks or so often it's questions or problems that the user face on the community they ask about it and we release a video to help them out so if you want to claim the promotion and enroll that's bimpure.com slash promo uh okay so i will just before moving on to the guest uh let's see what we have in the chat, Ricardo from Brazil, Darren from South Africa, Wise Guy from Frankfurt, Germany, uh, Bruna from Brazil also, Jim from Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania, uh, Ibrahim from Beirut. Thanks for tuning in. So let me show you now a video. So this is the uh, original Reddit 1.0 release video when it was first launched in uh, 2020, so that was 25 years ago. You can see how awesome this kind of late 90s style video was. <laughs> and how awesome is that? And so that's as a way to introduce our guest, which is Dave Lamont. Dave is the former CEO of uh, the Revit Technology Corporation before Revit was acquired by Autodesk in 2002 for 133 millions. So he became CEO in 1999 and product first launched in 2000. Before that, he was uh, 
the COO at Concentra Corporation. And after Rivet, he's been the CEO at multiple apps such as App IQ, Currency, and Cubex, which has been acquired by Trimble. And now he serves as the executive chairman at Ace Lab, a new startup focused on improving how our architects select building products. So I'm welcoming to show Dave. How are you, Dave? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Nicholas. Yeah, it's scary to see that video. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, kind of dates me a little bit, I guess. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe we were ahead of our time then. Uh, for sure, I do have uh, a couple of questions. Uh, well, first, I think we're going to sp split the session. First, I really want to get into Revit's origin story. Then I want to talk about uh, Ace Lab as well. So first question, how did you end up becoming Revit CEO? Well, um, the company was founded by Leonid Raiz and Erwin Youngreis, who were two developers, for, uh, the earliest developers from parametric technologies, PTC. PTC brought uh, parametric modeling to mechanical engineering, and, and they had a vision to bring parametric modeling to building design. Neither of them you know, were architects or had a background in that area. And they studied and studied and studied. Now, um, John Hirschtick, who is a, a well-known name in computer-aided design, was on the board of Revit. It wasn't called Revit at the time. It was called Charles Revit Software at the time. And uh, John and I worked together at Computer Vision, uh, where, where we were both executives. They had acquired one of his earlier companies. And, um, and so he had recommended me to... Erwin and, uh, and, and Leonid. And that's really how, you know, I met the team and I met Northbridge Venture Partners that were the investors at the time. And, and that's how I was able to, uh, to join. And it was really, I was the first time, I was a COO at a, at a previous public company, but this is the first time I was a CEO in a, in a startup company. And yeah, and, and that was, so from my notes, like Leonid and Erwin, well, the company launched in 1997 under the name Charles River Software. And you said that Neither of them had background in architecture. No, no. I mean, they were their background was building computer-aided design for mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. right? That's what parametric technologies was, you know, you know, and still is really a time. It's a lot more than that today, but um, they they really kind of revolutionized uh, the computer-aided design for for mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. um, that and. And so what, when Revit got started, was it straight away a tool made for architecture in mind? Or yes, it, it, if from yeah. the ground up, it was built for architects. They did add a number of architects into the organization mm -hmm. to support them. Um, uh, Marty Rosmanith, who now is at Schema, David Conant. Yeah, Ma Marty um, was uh, here on the show we'll to talk about uh, Schema. To talk about Last Schema, year, yeah. I think. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was one of the lead product managers. Uh, David Conant was one of the lead people testing the software. So we did add architects in, but they they did you know a, a good year of studying of mm -hmm. architects and drawings and trying to immer immerse themselves in the market. And they were you know two genius level guys. I mean they were amazing developers. So I'm I'm curious if they were an engineer, uh, how did they get the idea to have a, a product for architects? Because typically they say take a problem that you're facing. The industry you know what it was? I, I think it. they they made a lot of money at parametric technologies and built expensive <laughs> houses. And, uh -huh. uh, and and realize the problems in yeah. uh, that architects were facing at the time. Um, but no, it was clear though that architecture, software for architecture was way behind mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, how can I take the technology we understood and we helped develop and bring it to another market in a, in a, an adjacent market, essentially computer aided design being adjacent, but architecture being another application. That was their thinking. How can we revolutionize another market? And so for whatever, the, the core idea, in fact, the name Revit comes from revise instantly, right? Yes. So was that the big killer feature that it was allowing changes yeah, well, to update? I mean, we sat at a whiteboard, like brainstorming mm -hmm. names and, you know, mm -hmm. that one, one, Rev, Rev, revise. Hey, how about Revit? You know, <laughs> it was no more scientific than that. Uh, but yes, it means revise it. And, and really, you know, what Revit's, big advancement was being able to have a parameter drive a piece of geometry a wall right and be able to change that and have the wall update and the drawing associated with it update and so you know being able to revise quickly 
which is you know the real problem in in computer aided design systems in general was the inspiration for that product mm -hmm. and if what what was the original dream for, for for revit was it this idea of revise instantly or I think it was also the, the idea of parametric modeling was some yeah, of the, and the, the idea was to bring used. parametrics to architecture. Parametric, so, yeah, so, so, which, so, which to, was to, in to, MEP. To drive your revisions through parametric mm -hmm. editing, the same way parametric editing was used at parametric technology, which was mechanical CAD. I mean, that was the core system. Now, and the vision was, you know, all of architecture all architecture, all drawings, all building types over time, mm -hmm. you know, a, a truly massive undertaking. Yeah, that, for sure. That was, an, yeah. and was it, was it a super ambitious vision from, from the start? Like, did they know how big it could get or like, were the ambitions oh, smaller? Oh, oh, I think we all knew how big it could get. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we fully grasped mm -hmm. how endless the problem is to solve. And, you know, and to be fair, it took a long time 